Hello, I am Jennifer Lynn Bursell, aka Ever Tuning Butterfly, bringing to you a living with an invisible learning challenge where we will discuss the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD. I don't know if you're a new listener or not, but I would like to share with you where I get most of my articles for this podcast. I've recently learned about a nonprofit that I would really like to help. It's the NVLD Project. In addition to doing research on NVLD, and working to get it back on the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, that is the DSM, they provide support groups for those with NVLD. You can find the NVLD project at www.nvld.org. All proceeds from this podcast and the ads will go towards the NVLD project. I will include the link for this in the description of the podcast. Please go to livingwithnld.com to learn more about my podcast. Also, I would like to announce that I now have created a YouTube channel for this podcast. I will post the link for this in the description for you. All right, so we will be talking about the history of NLD when it was first discovered compared to autism and Asperger's today. So the first article I will read from is titled, Who Was the First Person to Be Diagnosed with Autism? About the history of autism to discover when the first person was diagnosed with it. It started in 1933 when Donald Triplett was sent to an institution to be 50 miles away from his family in Mississippi. After being there for a year, his parents removed him, even though the people in the institution told them not to do that. The parents wanted to find answers and help for Donald. They did find help for Donald from Dr. Kaner, who, quote, was one of the nation's top psychiatrists. Dr. Craner was able to tell his parents why he was behaving the way he was. That is Donald. I have personally, I have worked with children and adults on the ASD. They were clients who had high and low functioning ASD. Sorry, I shouldn't say had, I should say have. Um, nonverbal and verbal, aggressive and not aggressive at all. I'm just giving you the different varieties that I had for my clients. Um, One of the ways to set NLD and ASD apart from each other is by this quote, both disorders are associated with problems with motor skills, but it is explained in NVLD by visual spatial organizational, sorry, organization, while in, ta- in autism, it is associated with sensory processing difficulties. I'll read that again. So both disorders are associated with problems with motor skills, but it is explained in NVLD by visual spatial organization while in autism, it is associated with sensory processing difficulties. While teens with autism tend to be visual learners, teens with NVLD learn better by hearing information, end quote. So that tells you some differences from ASD and NVLD. This quote is from an article titled Nonverbal Learning Disorder versus Autism Spectrum Disorder by Dr. Gordon Day. This quote offers good distinctions between NLD and ASD because it says why one with NLD would have challenges with motor skills versus one with ASD, which might be confusing for some one who may know much about the 
who may not know much about the two and how they are different. It also shows how unveiled the years and people with, uh, with ASD or are on the ASD learn differently, which makes sense to me now that I think about it and reflect on all the different clients I had that when I was working with them and that they were and who had autism. Most of them learn better with visual cues rather than auditory ones. But some one with NLD would be the opposite in most cases unless their visual memory is stronger, but that's not what I've seen and who I've met so far when I've been talking to my peers who have NLD. I did have one client who had, sorry, went from talking in the past. I had one client who has autism and ADHD. He was seven. He would have tantrums that would last about three hours. He would be aggressive towards me and my coworker, so we would have to defend ourselves in order not to get hurt. One time I didn't block because I wasn't expecting it and he kicked me in my private part. This made me learn to block my body any time he had a tantrum. Basically, expected unexpected. This one, this was one of my hardest clients because I would feel empathetic for him because I felt like I could relate since I have an LD. I'm not saying NLD is the same thing as autism because they are different from each other, but I can relate because I know what it's like to have a challenging life and to have a brain that's wired differently. One of the differences between ADHD and NLD is that, quote, often those with ADHD are good at more gross motor activities and sports, whereas those with NBLD struggle initially with most motor activities, including sports, end quote. This quote is from the article, What are the differences and similarities between nonverbal learning disabilities and BLD and ADHD? By Dr. Allison Harrison, Associate Professor of Psychology and Clinical Director of the Regional Assessment Resource Center in Queen's University. Um, another difference is that with math, quote, as such, someone with NBLD will struggle in math every day, in every class, with every teacher. By contrast, individuals with ADHD are often, in quotes, unavailable for learning. Typically, students with ADHD have difficulty in math because of what are often called in quotes, clearless errors, end quote. I can relate to both of these quotes because I am better at both fine and gross motor skills only because I've worked at improving them. I also did this with math. I try to do these things with everything that I find challenging because of having NLD, but some things are easier to tackle than others. My gross motor, along with math skills, are easier to change than my driving skills have been, but that won't let me give up or get discouraged because I want to become more independent and an adult. And something I remember from that article that I quoted is that one of the careless errors is that an ADHD individual can make with math is that sometimes they confuse some of the symbols in math with each other, which can make sense because if you're having a hard time paying attention, maybe that affects your focusing. And if you can't focus on the symbols, maybe that's why you confuse them. I'm just making an assumption there. I'm not sure that's why they confuse them, but that could be why or how that happens. Um, so Asperger's was discovered in the 1940s, 
but wasn't added to the ASD until 1994. I got this info from an article titled Asperger's Syndrome. Quote, Asperger's, also known as Asperger's Disorder, was first described in the 1940s by Denise pediatrician Hans Asperger, who observed autism-like behaviors and difficulties with social and communication skills in boys who had normal intelligence and language development, end quote. And Temple Grandin is one of the most widely known people with Asperger's. I have watched a movie about her that was done in 2010. It was very well done, at least I thought it was. I learned a lot about her and Asperger's from it. I learned that she is very difficult, sorry, very gifted in math and has helped cows and people in many ways. I was able to understand what Asperger's is and how it can affect a person's life better. I don't want to spoil it too much, though, if you haven't seen it. In an article titled Estimated Prevalence of Nonverbal Learning Disability Among North American Children and Adolescents, they say that 2.2 to 2.9 million people have NVLD. It was first discovered in 1967. I think they are more than that many who have NVLD because they have probably gone either misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed. This has to do with NLD being hard to understand by scientists, psychologists, and psychiatrists. I also think that because there isn't as much research out there about NVLD, it's harder for people who have it and their loved ones to know where to go to look for it or to have help. So whenever I do research for my podcast, I try to use reliable resources because I want my audience to be able to trust what they're listening to and add the information I can provide and add the information to it that I can provide them. I also provide them with the link to the articles so that they can read them if they desire. This lets them decide how credible they are. I think the book NLP from the Inside Out is the the third edition by Michael Brian Murphy. The author has NLD and defines it. He gives a history of it and provides some good information about it. Following is a summary of the book from Amazon. Quote, NLD from the inside out fully explains nonverbal learning disability to anyone who has that diagnosis or wants to understand it better, Michael Brian Murphy offers practical advice and strategies for school relationships and life after graduation. He writes with an authentic voice about a diagnosis that he shares with many other teens and adults. This inside look at NLD contains wisdom, clarity, and humor that will inspire those with NLD as well as parents, teachers, and therapists. The author to that summary is Judith Canty Graves and Carnes Graves, co-authors of Parents Have the Power to Make Special Education Work. This book will be an eye-opener for teachers, parents, and other interest readers, other interested readers, no doubt, Many will realize, ah, now I understand. And hopefully that understanding will contribute to the success of children and adults with NLD. It's also a valuable resource for young people with NLD, real life voices, experiences, and common sense. As the parent of an adult child with disabilities, I've learned that the true experts in the field are people with disabilities. (laughs) Michael 
uh, sorry, M Mr. Murphy's book ably demonstrates that fact. Bravo. The author to that quote was Katie Snow, author of Disability in Natural Revolutionary Common Sense for Raising Successful Children with Disabilities. End quote. I would recommend reading this book, NLD from the Inside Out, with someone who is neurotypical because some of it may be hard to understand depending on your reading level or the knowledge you have of NLD. If you do read it with someone else, then you can talk to them about it to be able to bounce off ideas with them about the book and NLD. So, Also, the other place you can go to research about NLD other than Google is NBL, and the NBLD project. And that's where I usually try to go for some of my articles. I also use Google and I usually Google the topic and um, what I'm looking for. So that's usually how I find my articles. Um, if you're curious. So whether you have NLD, ASD, or Asperger's, your life will be challenging to varying degrees, but your life can also have positive aspects in it from the areas you're, you're gifted. Those areas could be math, science, music, because of your auditory um, gifts from NLD, or your verbal gifts, so that could be a speaker or a teacher, or maybe a writer or podcaster. Um, and as I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. Um, since I do have a podcast for, since I do have a website for this podcast, I would like you to go on that website and tell me about the challenges that you usually run into when you're trying to do research on NLD and other learning challenges that are on the ASD. Please share to the level of your comfortability. If you are sharing, oh, sorry, if you are listening on Spotify, you can send me an email at livingwithnld at gmail.com. Or if you listen to the Apple podcast, please leave an answer and a review for me. If you're listening on livingwithnld.com, comment on the episode on the podcast page. And as always, I will leave the links to the articles in the podcast description for you so you can read them if you desire. Talk to you next Friday. Bye. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living with NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there is a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than it originally was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.